Schlick. I've been the debate coach here, one of the debate coaches since the 1990s, so a very, very long time. And today we're going to be talking about the um, kind of the basics, right? This assumes really not a lot of background in kind of plans. Uh, if you were on this panel, if you were judging, and the judge asked you, or if you were a judge, and the judge asked you, or the students asked you, what are your opinions on topical counter plans? Would you be like the first person who says yes, the first person who says no, or the first person that's the third person who says what's a counter plan? The last one. Last one, right? That would be no. No? No. Okay. Uh, so, we're going to talk about uh, counter plans from a very basic traditional viewpoint. I'm a fairly traditional judge. Uh, but with everything, especially counter plans, uh, I just want to put it out there, there's a lot of disagreement on the theory of counter plans, and so you always want to go back and talk to your coaches, because um, these are more conventions than absolute rules, and there's a lot of disagreement in the area of counter plan theory. But this, again, this is kind of a very basic, so I think it's good to have the basic foundational understanding that you can permeate out and do kind of other bizarre things with counter plans. So first of all, what is a counter plan? A counter plan is simply an alternative plan to that offered by the affirmative. So in a debate, normally the firm is going to get up and say, here's our plan, we should do this, right? And there's a problem, and if we do our plan, we're going to solve those problems, basically is what happens. Okay. The uh, negative, when they offer a counter plan, is they offer their own plan to solve the problem. So but they may say, okay, you're right, there's a problem, but instead of doing plan A, let's do plan B. So to make it very simple in your everyday lives, you could be hungry, that could be a problem. You want to get rid of that hunger pain. And a friend of yours says, hey, let's go out to Jack in the Box. That's their plan. And you, go, you might say, no, 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 that's kind of unhealthy. I'm kind of you know, trying to you know, have a more healthy diet. Let's go out to this other place. You can pick some other restaurant or some other place, right? And that's your counter plan. So you both want to stop the hunger, but if they want to go to a fast food. You reject that because of bad nutrition. You say, I want to go somewhere else, right? A more nutritious place. So you, that's your counter plan. And you have a debate about what's the best place to go. They can say, well, that's, I understand that's way too expensive, and Jack in the Box is cheaper, more unlimited money. So you have a debate about which of those is more, uh, more pragmatic and more philosophically desirable. But basically, that's all that's happening. Some firm says, I want to do this, and they say, no, 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 let's do this instead. And so they offer a counter plan. And this is an off case position, and it's introduced. I know this is a joint session. So if you're in doing Lincoln Douglas debate or policy debate, uh, NDTC, et cetera, you would give this in the one NC, and if you were doing parliamentary debate, you in the first speech as well called the leader of the opposition. Basically, the first negative speaker has to introduce the counter plan. You can't do it later on in the debate. After your first speaker is done speaking, and you want to offer a counter plan, it is too late. You have to offer it, you have to put it out there in your very first negative speech. Now, it's normally not the very first thing you talk about in your negative speech, normally the first thing you talk about is like topicality, and then only disadvantages, and then counter plans normally the third thing that will come out. So benefits of a counter plan. Right? Why do neighbors run counter plans? And uh, depends on the, the debate, but sometimes these are some of the basic benefits. <laughs> One, it puts the negative on the offensive. Right? When we walk into a debate, most times the negative, we feel like we're on the defensive. Like, oh, the firm knows what they're going to do. They have this plan they spent 20 minutes prepping out for or longer if you're doing policy debate. It's thrown at you, and then all of a sudden you've got to think on the top of your head about how I'm going to argue against this, and what are disadvantages I can lead to it, and all kinds of all kinds of stuff, right? But you're always kind of reacting. This allows you to make the affirmative react to you. You say, "Ha, you have a plan." Well, I have a counter plan. React to that, right? And so you kind of turn the tables on the affirmative. You kind of become a quasi affirmative in the sense of you are proposing a plan. Again, these can usually be uh, prepared before the round. So when you're in prep time. Right? You can say, here's what we want to do. And you can prepare those so you're not walking into the round kind of reacting. You already have some offensive weapons, a way to win the debate that, you, that you've actually spent time on. Uh, you probably have a better handle on the counter plan than the NATO than the firm does, just like the firm probably has a better handle on their plan than you do as a NATO. It expands negative ground, and what I mean by that is that normally if you're just sticking to arguing what the affirmative has said in their plan, you are playing on their rules, right? You're playing on their foundation. By arguing a counter plan, you expand the different arguments you can bring into the debate, and most of those arguments are going to be more favorable to you. Um, and depending on the theory, you get into, but you can at least in theory jettison a counter plan, just like you can jettison any other argument. 
as a negative. If you're making a topicality argument, you guys had topicality earlier. Right, if you make a topicality argument as a negative, you realize later on, oh, you're probably not winning this argument. It's probably not going to be a winner for you. you the affirmative has some good answers. That's why they're topical. You think the judge is buying their answers to topicality. Why would you spend any time on topicality in your, in your closing speeches? You wouldn't. You say, okay, they win topicality, they'll win on something else. You can do the same thing here. You can say, okay, I'll put the counter plan. They have really good answers to the counter plan. We're going to spend our time somewhere else, and so you can judge it. So you can throw it out there, see how people deal with it. If they don't deal with it very well, you can go after it in your closing statements. If they argue very, very well, maybe you want to judge it and go after something else. But the idea of negative is throw a lot of stuff in you know, your first speech, throw topicality out there, a couple of disadvantages, a counterplan, whatever. Sit back, see what the affirmative deals with well. Don't go after those arguments. Go after the ones you think they don't do as good a job on. And the most important thing, perhaps, is that this can independently win you the debate. In most debates, if you win the counterplan, you will win the debate. So if you walked into your debate and all you had was a counterplan, and that's all you argued, and you lost every other argument in the debate, but you win counterplan, you will win the debate. Because what you were telling the judge, and when you win a counterplan, what you're saying is our counterplan is a better plan than theirs. So you have two pieces of legislation, and if our idea, if we convince the judge at the end of the day that going to the salad restaurant is a better alternative than Jack in the Box, and they believe that, then they're going to go to the salad restaurant. They're going to Jack, Jack in the Box. Yep. But um, for your restaurant example, what if the motion was we should go to a restaurant, then in the end you're still going to a restaurant even if you go with the negative. So is the negative still win? Well, we'll get into that. It depends on the wording of the topic as to what you can run or not. Okay. But the resolution is we should go to Jack in the Box, so we should go to a fast food restaurant. Okay. Right? And you say, no, we should go to a salad place. Right? Then I either got a fast food restaurant, whether it was McDonald's, Jack in the Box, whatever, or I got a non fast food place, which is a salad house over here, right? So it depends. But if you win the salad house, you're going to win the debate. Just a minute. You can win the debate on, 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 the, on just like if you win topicality. You'd normally win a debate on Kelly. Not true for disadvantages. You can win disadvantages outright and not win the debate. Because if the affirmative has more impact on their advantages than you have on your disadvantages, you're not going to win the debate. So topicality independently wins the debate, counter plans independently win the debate, which is why those are truly good arguments to, to make. More so for me than, than disadvantages. You can win every disadvantage and so does the debate. Okay. So let's say you're arguing you should have vaccines in schools. And the affirmative says, hey, the vaccines, we save all these lives, we stop polio and negatives. Counter plan is, hey, getting a shot hurts for 30 seconds. Okay, maybe the affirmative is right. You win. You win that disadvantage. Shots hurt. We still outweigh because we save lives and stop polio. Okay, so, great, you won the disadvantage. I don't care. But the affirmative can't say, oh, great, you won top of Cali, we don't care. <laughs> yeah, they do. Or, hey, okay, you won the counter plan, we don't care. Oh, yeah, they do because they just lost it. Right, so those actually have more impact in the debate a lot of times than this event. All right, let's talk about the nuts and bolts. Uh, normally, this, these are what uh, most traditional judges will require in counter plans. This is kind of really traditional foundational. There's a lot of theory on why you don't always have to do all these things, but you can talk to your coaches about that. If you do the things that we're playing out, that I'm playing out here for novice debate, you don't have to worry about getting into deep theory arguments. It just makes it clean cut. Every judge is going to accept your counter plan if you do it from a traditional standpoint. If you do a non-traditional standpoint, some judges may accept it, some judges may not accept it. You're taking, you're kind of hoping that you get the right judge. But there's not a judge and debate server that's not going to accept the counter plan if you do the following things. Everyone will accept this, not everyone accepts these other changes. So first, you normally need to provide a written text, which would include like the age and just like the affirmative will have a written text of their plan. You should have a written text of the counter plan. You should walk into the debate with a written text of what your counter plan is. So your counter plan would be written out, uh, right? Uh, our friends will go to the salad house, which is located on 1506 Mendocino Avenue. Right? That would be in their written text. Is we will go to Jack and Box, right? Which is on 1508 Mendocino Avenue. And so they have a written text. You have a written text. Why do you want a written text? So the judge knows exactly what he's. Right, because later on in the debate, they're going to get up and say, well, you never said you had to go to the salad house. You just said it, an alternative restaurant. The alternative rest restaurants can be not healthy as well. And you go, no, no, but we specifically said the salad house, which is only served for nutritious salads. 
No, but you didn't say the salad house. You just said a restaurant. No, we said a salad. No, you didn't say salad house. Well, you know how you solve that? Right. Judge, here's what we said. We read it verbatim. Here it is. It was a copy of it. That's exactly what we said. If you don't have that renown, then I've said that, you know, just, well, did they say salad house? Did they just say it right now? Uh, there's no written record of it, so how do I, how do I really know? Instead, it will be a memory. Okay, so I've seen lots of people lose debates on the negative because of that, because the presumption is going to go against you. It's your counter plan, so you need to convince the judge that said, you said salad house. And if you don't have anything written down that says salad house, then any doubts can go to the affirmative. But you've got to substantiate that salad house. So always have a written, a written mandate. Okay, going back to what was being argued over here. Generally speaking, from a traditional standpoint, your counter plans should be non-topical. There are some theory arguments, and we argue them all the time, right? You have topical counter plans, but those are hard arguments to win a lot of times. Uh, it's much easier to, when you're first beginning, just to argue the counter plan has to be non-topical. Every judge in the world will vote for a non-topical counter plan. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. If the resolution using this example right here was resolved that we should go out to a fast food restaurant okay, and affirm that that's the resolution, we should go to a fast food restaurant. And the negative says, the firm says, we should go to McDonald's. And the negative says, counter plan, we should go to Burger King. Okay, it appears like you have a counter plan. They want to go to McDonald's, you want to go to Burger King. But what's the first thing the firm is going to argue? Exactly. Right. Perfect. Right. The firm is going to say, "Hey, your plan's topical. Your plan, even if you vote for, even if the judge agrees that Burger King, for the reasons you give, that more variety of burgers taste better, they're cheap. Whatever reasons you give, why Burger King would be a better place to go to, is in fact a fast food restaurant. So therefore, the resolution is we should go to a fast food restaurant. You have just proven we should go to a fast food restaurant. Your counter plan proves, proves the resolution true. We have two affirmatives sitting in the debate. We both agree we should go to a fast food restaurant." We may disagree which, which fast food restaurant we should go to, but we both agree the resolution should be implemented. We should go to a fast food restaurant. There's no disagreement on that. We all agree on that. And the other way to ask yourself is, could the affirmative have gotten up and argued Burger King? Is that an argument they could have made? Yeah, they could have argued Wendy's, they could have argued Arby's, they could have argued Jack, uh, Jack in the Box, right? they could have argued Burger, or, or, Real places, whatever, right? Any fast food, you know, place they can think of, the affirmative could argue. So normally your, your counter plan has to be something that the affirmative could not have argued. Yeah. So that makes it like not permeable, right? If it's not, if it's not No, you can still you can still affirm it if it's not topical. Okay. You can still affirm something if it's not topical. Okay. But you can still say you go both both Yeah. We'll get to that in a moment. We'll get to that. But first one, non-topical. Just it's got to be non-topical, right? It's got to be non-topical. Um, and if you, but it's not always clear cut. Just like sometimes the affirmative argues cases that are they topical. Then it's like a fine line whether they're topical or not. The negative can argue counter plans that seem topical, but maybe they can argue that they're not topical. So let's say the resolution we should uh, lower the California should lower the drinking age to 18. And the affirmative gets up and says, yeah, we're going to do wherever it says 21 in the penal code, we're just going to lower it down to 18, so, you know, 21, 18, everything else stays the same. Right. Negative says, counter plan. Uh, our counter plan is we're going to lower the drinking age uh, to 18, but only for enclosed restaurants. Meaning, if you're 18, you can drink legally, but only if you're at a restaurant or a bar or in close place. You can't go out and buy it, you can't drink it at home, you can't drink it at those. Go to a restaurant. Like in Sweden, you can go to Sweden. If you're 18, you can go to a bar or you can go to a restaurant and order wine, but you can't go to a store and buy it. You can't drink legally in your house. And for gets up and says, wait a minute, that's a topical counter plan. You're lowering it to 18. Right? You've lowered the drinking age to 18. People can legally drink in 18. Go, no, 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 we're not topical because the resolution really means lowering it to 18 like we So no matter what, you can drink, you know, without any regulations. And we have regulations, so we're not really lowering it to 18. So, is that topical or not topical? Which is kind of more things. Let's say the affirmative had got up and done the same thing. Today, our, counter, our plan is to lower the drinking age to 18, but only in the restaurants. So, as long as it's topical, it's affirmative. 
No, 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 you're top of the ball. I mean, I mean, it's not a factual top of the ball. You've lowered it to 18, right? Part of it, right? Question is, the negative's gonna say, well, to be top, you have to lower it all across the board. You have to basically white out 21 and put in 18 and everything else has to be the same. You're not doing that. That's our interpretation, right? You, you know, you're not doing that. And the firm is gonna say, yeah, well, we don't have to. We just have to lower it to 18. As long as some 18-year-olds can drink or some conditions legally, then we we'll lower it to 18. So what's your interpretation? What, what does lowering the drinking age 18 mean? Right, so it comes down to some kind of interpretation of that. But generally, if you can convince the judge that lowering the drinking age to 18 in restaurants is not topical, then your counter plan is going to fly. If the affirmative can say, wait a minute, that plan's topical, you know, we could have argued that, then your counter plan is actually going to help prove the, re the, 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 the resolution true. All right, so non topical. Now, you can be non topical by having a non topical agent. We'll get into agent counter plans later on, type of counter plans. But one way to be non topical is that the resolution says the United States federal government should do this. We say, no, California should do this. Our result that California should do this, no, the United States federal government should do this. Or the United States federal government should do this, no, the United Nations should do this. Or China should do this, right? So you change the agent, you change who should be doing this. Or, but the most likely way that's normally done is you change the mandate to a non-topical mandate. Right, so going to the salad restaurant versus going to the Jack and Box or fast food restaurant would be changing the mandate. It's the same group of people doing it, but you want them to do something different. And here's why you can here's why you can be topical but permanent. Let's say the resolution says we should um, we should uh, lower uh, the personal income tax. Affirmative lowers the personal income tax. Right there, you've got to decide that. And the NATO says, counter plan, we're going to lower the, um, US FG should lower the, uh, the corporate income tax. And everybody's going to decide that. All right, it's not topical. What's that do? Personal income tax, corporate tax. Affirmative could stand and say, do well. We should lower the income tax. Yeah, you know, we should lower that. See, so the resolution only really talks about income tax. So all we can do is lower the income tax. If we want to lower the corporate tax, we will do well. Does that make sense? Why being non topical yeah. to make it permanent has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Right. So, permanent means can you do both? Or should you do both? Uh, normally, the second thing you have to show to some degree, and there's some wiggle room in here, uh, is solvency. Right? So, if you're hungry, the reason you're going to the, to the restaurant or whatever is to get food, but you're not hungry anymore. If someone say, no, we're all hungry, let's go out to, in the resolution, we should go to a fast food restaurant, you argue we should go to a fast food restaurant, we won't we'll be hungry anymore. And someone says, hey, we should go to the arcade and, uh, you know, play skeet ball or something. Well, how does, well, I'm only hungry, how does that give you not to be hungry anymore? Well, it doesn't, but we'll have fun. You know, I'm still going to be, I still want to eat something. So, uh, if you go to the doctor and you have a broken ankle, Right? And you want to fix, and he says, we should do this. And I go, well, I want to get a second opinion. So I go to the second doctor and say, yeah, you got a broken ankle, it's pretty bad. You know, but what I want to do is I want to do some shoulder surgery. Well, how's that going to fix my ankle? Well, it's not. But I have a better shoulder. Well, yeah, but what about my, I still got to fix my ankle. Right? So that's not a reason for me not to do ankle surgery. Right? So if I go to a second opinion, it's because I, I want another procedure that's going to fix my ankle, maybe in a better way. Same thing, so you're saying there's a problem. Firm says there's a problem, here's a way of solving it. You're saying, yeah, there is a problem, here's a better way of solving it, which is a non topical way of solving it. So, we, so you have to solve, but you don't always have to solve to the same, that means better, you can show you solve better than you firm. But as long as you solve to some degree, you can have some wilder room in this. There's always an argument about which plan solves better, and sometimes you can solve less better as long as you get other advantages that they don't get out of it. And I'll give you an example of that in a moment. But there's always some level, some level of, of solvency. Uh, but to some degree, you have to show you're solving the problem. Because that's the whole reason the firm is proposing the plan, is because there's a problem. Right? For people that are homeless and they want to do this to get them so they're no longer homeless, your plan has to somehow deal with, solve, with homelessness. You've got to help solve, solve that area. The next, and, and uh, this is where uh, being permeable in a sense comes in, is you have to be net beneficial. The negative counter plan has to be net beneficial. Think of baseball. 
think of this analogy. You hit the ball and you run to first place, and the shortstop picks up the ball, throws it to first base, and the batter, who's now running to first base, and the ball get to the base at the same exact time. Who does that benefit? The runner. The runner, right? Runners win when the tie, right? Runners, they win all ties. You've got to have the ball there first. In a debate, at the end of the day, if the, if the judge believes the counter plan is just as good, no better, no worse than the plan, two equal, so there's two equally way, equally good medical ways of solving my English issue. Another one is better in any particular. They're different, but at the end of the day, they cost the same, the healing's the same, the pain I'm going through, there is no difference whatsoever. Absolutely none. The firm is going to win. Because what the negative does when they say counter plan, they say we have a better way of solving it, not an equally good way. You have to prove you have a better way of solving it. So ties go in debate, ties go to the firm. So you can't just say, well, my way is just as good. It's got to be better. Now, it's going to be a lot better, but it's got to be demonstrably better to some degree, which is what we mean by net beneficial. My the surgery this doctor is proposing for my ankle has some benefit that that one does. It Maybe it's cheaper, it maybe it's less pain, maybe it's not the running quicker, whatever the case might be. But there's some benefit to going with the second one. The, the ways you would normally prove net benefits is to avoid, the most likely way you're going to do this, the way it's probably the 90% of the time, is that you point out that you avoid any disadvantages. You point out disadvantages. Or you mitigate disadvantages. So obviously, if you're going to the salad restaurant, what's the, you know, you're going to argue with disadvantage to obesity, cholesterol problems, heart attacks by eating fast food, right? Fast food bad. Fast food bad for the healthy, right? Not good for you. And then when you get the counterplan, so now we should go here. Now notice we avoid the cholesterol this event. We're eating salads, not high cholesterol. We, we don't get that. We don't get that bad hamburger stuff in our system. So we avoid that bad thing happening. Or you can provide advantages. Just like the affirmative would stand and say, here's our plan, here are advantages to our plan, you would stand up. And you would say, here are advantages, whatever those might be, uh, to um, like maybe it's cheaper to go to the salad restaurant. You know, say it might be. And then the fourth one is it is it's good if it's there, but it doesn't have to be there. It's not always there. Most of the time, it's not going to be there. But if it is there, it's really cool and you want to point it out. And that is mutual exclusivity. It's helpful, but not necessary. It's damn helpful. But normally, unfortunately, it's not going to be the case. Most of the time, your cannabis probably are not going to be this way. So mutual exclusivity happens when it is impossible to do both. You cannot do both the plan and the counter plan at the same time. You cannot do both. So a lot of times in bi-directional topics, it's very easy to illustrate that. The resolution is resolved that we should lower the, the, in, the personal income tax. And if negative someone says, no, we should increase the personal income tax. Obviously, I can't increase the personal income tax and decrease the personal income tax at the same time. I can't do both those things. Uh, so if you have a counter plan that now, you know, and sometimes again, it's not always clear cut. Could you perm? It's called permanency. Hey, we could do both, right? Uh, could you go to the fast food restaurant and? And the salad restaurant at the same time, or in the same lunch period. In an hour, we can hit there real quick. They hit over there. Let's hit, let's hit the hamburger. We'll hit the, the salads. Right? Could you do that? 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 Could you you have to show the counter plan is greater than the plan, or the counter plan, whoops, or the counter plan is greater than the plan plus counter plan. So a little formula here. 
That's what judges are going to look at. And that's what you need to convince the judge of. So the counter plan is better than the plan. So if you only have to do one, is it better to do our plan or theirs? So if you can only go to the salad restaurant, or you can only go, so we only have enough time to go to the Jack in the Box, we argue it's better to go to this, right? right? Now they argue we could go, we argue we should just do this, but they argue we could do the plan, eat the burgers, and then go with the salad. Right? So they say, hey, we can do both. But we would argue you're still better off doing this, even if there wasn't enough time to do this, you're better off just doing this, because remember all that bad stuff that comes from high cholesterol? Well, you're still going to get that if you do the burgers and go with the salad. The only way not to have a high cholesterol is to avoid the burger pumps. So our, pl our counter plan is better than doing both of these things. I'll give you a kind of a topic of a few years ago. It was an LD topic. It was USFG should intervene in the greater horn of Africa. And here's what a lot of reformers argue, that there was a lot of um, human rights violations taking place, murders, enslavement, and work in camps, and women being raped, and kids being slaughtered and stuff. Uh, and so, uh, Fermi said, the USFG is going to send the military, we're going to wipe out the warlords and create stability and promote human rights in this area, which sounds awesome, until the Navy's got around and put it on the China disadvantage. He said, hey, China doesn't want the US meddling over there. Just like the US wouldn't want Russia meddling in Mexico for any reason whatsoever, there would be a military standoff of all of a sudden the Russians said, hey, we're going to send all of our military into Mexico because there's some bad things going on in Mexico. We want to take care of it to save the people. We'd say, uh-uh. <laughs> you are not sending your military into Mexico, right? And China feels the same way. They do not want U.S. meddling. And they have said there would be military retaliations if we sent troops over there, and there would be economic retaliations. So two bad things would happen. And so firm name is random. China, bad. China would be upset and two disadvantages of like military death and then economic elimination. And then it's, okay, counter plan. Our counter plan is that Canada will send their military in and they will wipe out the warlords. And Canada is willing to do it. China has no problem with Canada. We have evidence that says Canada is willing to do it. And China has, is open to uh, Canada to do it. Because the Russians or the, the Chinese don't care about Canada. They go, oop, the Canadians are coming. They don't care about Canadian imperialism. Right? They are not afraid of the Canadians taking over. They are afraid of the US taking over. So Canada can go in. right? So our counter plan of Canada is better than the US going in. Right? Now, what if a firm said, Perm, do both, why don't we do a joint expedition where Canada goes in and the US goes in? Do them both. Right? Still wouldn't be good, right? Because the Navy would still, no, 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 no. Because of all in theory, you could do that. You would never want to do that. Because remember, uh, the only way we don't get the China this out is if the US stays out. The only way the US stays out is by doing Canada alone. If, if, the, US, if the US and Canada go in, can, you know, U, US and Canada, their plan, US and our Canada. China still gets pissed off because the U.S. is in there. Right? We hit the disadvantage any time a U.S. military presence is there, whether it's solo, whether it was somebody else. The only way to solve the problem and not link to the China disadvantages are for Canada to go by itself. Does that make sense? So a lot of times the first thing affirmers will do is get up and say, Herb, do both. Right? And if you can't shoot, prove that's mutually exclusive, Right. It's impossible to do both. In this case, it's not possible to do both. You could do a joint venture. You have to be able to argue why it's a bad idea to do both. Right? And normally you say because the only way to avoid the DAs is to do a camp plan by itself. The only way to avoid the high cholesterol is to eat the salad without eating the burgers first. Remember, the whole idea you want to go there is to avoid good healthy food. Jack and Box is unhealthy food, so that's a bad combination. So does that make sense? Now, obviously, as we go through there, if you are the negative, you'll kind of, if you're the affirmative, you'll kind of go through trying to defeat a counter plan by going out and negating some of the stuff. You say, hey, your plan's topical. Right? And sometimes you make winky arguments why they're topical. Just like the negative will make winky topics, arguments why you're not topical as the affirmative, you're rolling your eyes on it, right? And the affirmative, I've got nothing to lose, so throw it out. The negatives throw all kinds of winky topicality arguments. Uh, affirmatives will sometimes have winky, uh, these weird top, non topicality arguments. They'll say, oh, you're, you're really topical. So they might say, hey, you know, Canada really is using U.S. Uh, military weapons that they bought from the U.S. 
So really when Canada goes in, it's really the US going in. And so we really think that's a topical plan, something we could have run and say your Canada plan doesn't count. Um, so you make it to the you know, and then so does that. So topical is that not topical. You can make part of your set. Or you can say, you know, you really don't solve, you know, Canadians are inept, or they, or they don't solve very well, you know, they can they don't solve as quickly as we would by ourselves. Or um, you are why we, uh, you know, that that uh, if Canada went in, it would be, there would be another dis that everyone in the international world would say the U.S. was really weak. We're afraid to go in. We're, we're afraid to stand up to China. And so now every other nation will start challenging the U.S. hegemony abroad, and that's going to be just going to set us back a thousand years. We have to be strong. We're not afraid of China. We won't be bluffed by China. Or it's going to argue it's simply not going to happen. You know, like China says we're going to do that. They're not confronting the U.S. militarily. They're like the barking dog, right? But look at its tail. It's going to be it's like they sound me. But they're not going to ruin the U.S. economic. They're all, we owe them so much money; it would be their own economic downfall if they broke off economic ties with us. So they may not like it. They may push and complain, posture. But when push comes to shove, they ain't doing shit about this. You know, so they ain't doing it. It's a bluffing dog. You walk towards it and backs off. It ain't happening. All right, types of counter plans. Really quickly, action counter plans. Again, this is where we were talking about we change the mandate, right? We change, you want to go to salad bar versus um, a fast food place. So, we have alternative action, reverse counter action, and plan inclusive counter plans. Alternative action is just like what they want, you want to do something just different. So, they want to, again, we talked about, they want to lower the personal income tax, you want to lower the corporate tax instead. They just, they just want to do something different. Uh, resolution says we should militarily intervene. You want to do an economic embargo? Solve the problem. Reverse is what we talked about. You, should, you, you, you reverse the topic. They want to increase military presence. You want to decrease military presence. They want to increase this tax. You want to decrease this tax. the opposite. They want to increase funding to education, they want to cut funding to education. And right, whatever the resolution is, you're doing the opposite. And obviously, you can't perm a reverse counter plan. That's what's nice about those, right? They can't say, do both! But wait a minute, you want to increase the number of troops in Afghanistan, we want to reduce the number of troops in Afghanistan. How the hell do you do both? How do I have more than 10,000 and less than 10,000 at the same time? Right? That doesn't make sense. So it's really hard to uh, perm and fix. Alternative actions you can, because hey, this is Barbo and let's have an institution. You might argue why perhaps you can do that. Plan inclusive counter plans. These are very highly controversial. I really need to suggest you talk to your uh, coaches about these, but they are a pain in the butt to deal with. What happens with the plan inclusive counter plan is when the negative pretty much takes the entire firm of plan, changes one little aspect of it, and argues why that little change is better. And sometimes it will depend on the nature of the topic. Whenever you hear something that says like all or something, uh, almost always expect the negative. And if you're the negative, you might want to always think about running a plan inclusive counter plan where you don't you do everything but one thing. There was a topic a few years ago that the USFG should ban um, all drugs. The firm argued why banning all drugs from the heroin and all these drugs is, you know, we can tax it, we can purify it, we can take the Cartels, you know, reuse the product cartels, etc. Negative dog and said, hey, our resolution says all drugs, so we're our counter plans, we're gonna we're gonna legalize all drugs but roofies. So we're not topical because we're not all drugs. We saw all the heroin stuff they talked about, we can purify it, we can undermine the power of the cartels, etc. etc. We're mutually exclusive, can't do both, can't legalize all drugs and not legalize all drugs at the same time. And we'd argue we're not beneficial because of the disadvantage we ran earlier, which says remember that if you legalize all, if you uh, if you legalize all drugs, all drugs, like the firm says, means you have to legalize roofies, so they're not topical. So, and if they legalize roofies, that means rape will rape slow up, because I mean we'll have access to this government and rape goes up. So vote for us because we represent everything good about them but rape. Vote for non-rape. We represent non-rape. Okay. So what do you do when you're the affirmative? Okay. Campaign the butt, right? And okay. Or you'll get something like resolve the farm bill should be passed. You know, something you get these topics. All that, you know, order, you know, congressional 
bill 15236 should be passed. And so you pull that up and you look at it and you study it, and it says, oh, it says, oh, there's a 3% funding from an increase in personal tax. Right, like, we're gonna do the farm bill, we're only gonna increase taxes by 1%, and we think 1% is more than enough taxes to cover everything. So it votes for us because we put less financial burden on the court and we only increase taxes by 1%, not 3%. But we keep everything else the same. So now the debate comes down to, is that 1% or 3% value? So they're highly controversial because basically you're arguing almost everything that Ferguson was supposed to argue. You're just changing one little aspect of it. So it's called plan inclusive counterplan. So talk to your coach about that in more detail. Uh, then agent counterplans, these are pretty straightforward. We talked about those a little bit as well. The example I gave up here was an agent counterplan, right? Ferguson says US, the resolution says USFG should intervene, and your counterplan is Canada or your counterplan is the United Nations, or if it's a domestic issue, your counterplan is just the states for you. So agent counterplans, you know, you can change it. You know, it should be a state instead of federal government, it should be federal government determined instead of state. Sometimes it can be an alternative government, depending on how the resolution is worded. If it says, you know, the United States, the US Congress should do X, Y, and Z, sometimes people will counterplan and say, no, the executive branch should issue an executive order, or the Supreme Court should uh, overturn a particular court precedent, which would be a better way of solving it. That's, what, that's how the, the, the resolution is worded. Or sometimes an international actor. The right? United Nations should do this, or another country should do this. In this case, Canada, right? Canada should do this. So everything stays the same, except for which you who's in charge. And then, the last one I want to talk about, uh, there's three of them, but I'm only going to talk about one of them. These are a little, well, the first one's only really done anymore, so this is the first one I'll talk about. It is called process counterplans. And process counterplans are saying, we should do everything the affirmative said to a T. We're not going to change anything. We're going we're to do everything they say. We're going to keep the agent. USF, they say the USFG. Yep, the USFG should do it. We, they say we should increase the personal income tax or we should go to Taco Bell. Yep, we should do that. Everything they say, their plan, 100%. Not change one thing. So how do you get away with that? How do you get away with arguing the counterplast? I mean, everything they just said. Well, a couple ways, but the only way I'm going to really talk about is the first one right now, which is a time delay. You say, we're going to do what they said, but we're going to wait. We're going to wait. Sometimes you can argue with consultant studies, but the only one that's really going to come into play for you guys probably is the studies, and you're going to hear that a lot. Especially the topics that say USFG should immediately do X, Y, and Z. Right? Almost anything that has a time frame on it in the wording of the resolution, negatives are always going to be have to uh, think about in terms of going to have to be prepared for a time delay kind of So the negative says we should do this, but we should just wait. We should wait for a better period. So it's a great, good idea, but the time is not now. The time would be better off. So it'd be like someone saying, yeah, you're right, we should go to Taco Bell, but you know what? Ditching class, well, if you want to go right now, I think we can wait an hour to go at 1 o'clock. And that will be no lose class time, we can get an hour since so it's going to be less crowded at 1 o'clock. So it's better to go at 1 o'clock. So good idea, but we'll do that, but at 1 o'clock, not 12 o'clock. We'll do it there. Now you have to have some reasons why you should delay. You can't just go up and say, hey, we should wait an hour. Or wait a week, or wait a week. You have to have some really good reasons why it would be beneficial to wait. And you can't just say that you want to say it later. You have to have some good reasons. Uh, think of, in a real world situation, uh, during the last presidential election when uh, Justice Anton Scalia passed away with about six months to go before the election. Obviously Barack Obama wanted to put forward, and did put forward, a replacement, a right, Supreme Court replacement. And the Republicans blocked that, right? And their argument was, well, we do want to have a replacement for Scalia. We do think there needs to be nine people in the Supreme Court. But we don't think the time is now to do it. We think the time is after the election. So we're going to block it until after the election. And what was the rationale for blocking until after the election? You know, it's going to be more democratic. So that's, this is going to be a big part of this election. People are going to be able to vote a Republican president in, or they're going to be able to vote a Democratic president in, and that's going to be a strong message on how they want the Supreme Court to go. So we should allow the people of this country to have a voice in who that's going to be. So we think it's better to wait, let the people have a say. How can we know all the people have a say in the press? Are you afraid of how people are? Are you afraid of their opinions? 
By the way, if everything were reversed, do the Democrats would have lost? Of course. Of course. And they would have made the same argument, right? That's probably not really the argument. That's the argument, right? I think we've got a chance to so Right now, we know we're not going to get the guy who's not going to debate. We'll get there. But that, they're not going to make that argument and say, hey, it's more democratic. We don't think we want So sometimes there may be good reasons to wait. Like, you might say, well, there's a certain, you know, there's a certain bill that's taking place in Congress. That vote's going to come up. You know, next week or next month, this would actually be better to wait till after that vote takes place for whatever reason. It's better, it's better to wait. But so you have to come up with a reason why. But anytime you have a resolution that says, we should immediately do this. And I say, well, we want to immediately Or what might be better to wait. Uh, answering counter plans. We've already talked a little bit about this in only like five minutes. So, uh, as I already mentioned, you can argue that the counter plan is topical in some way. You can say, hey, that's topical. Yeah. Going to a salad restaurant is really kind of, the salad restaurant really is kind of like a fast food restaurant. Because salads don't take a lot of time to cook. You just kind of throw stuff in the bowl and move to the lunch break. So, uh, we actually, it's kind of fast food. So, if you can make an argument why the salad restaurant's a fast food place, then, then maybe you can win that, right? I don't think anything. So, if I find a salad restaurant's a fast food place, uh, then uh, it's, it's not going to be legitimate counter plan. So argue the counter plan is topical. Per the counter plan, argue the plan and counter plan can be done at the same time. So try to argue you can do both. Uh, that's, again, you don't always want to do all these. It, it depends on the nature of the counter plan and how the red round is going. You can firm it. You don't always want to argue it's topical. You don't always want to argue a firm. These are just options that you have available. So perm is do both. Right? So they, again, they want to lower the, you want to lower the, the, the personal tax, they want to lower the corporate tax, you could argue perm do both. Right? That, that would be, that, that's the thing that would be even more. Right? You know, that's, a good, that's a good thing to do, do both. Uh, one thing about a perm is that remember, a perm is simply a test. If you are the negative or if you are the affirmative, on counter plans and you perm, you are not af actually advocating you do both. You are just saying, in theory, you could do both. You may be opposed to doing both, but you can still perm it and say, in theory, you can do both. So you might say, look, we don't really think lowering the corporate income tax is actually a bad idea, and here's some disadvantages for doing that. But judge, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, for whatever reason, you think lowering the corporate income tax is actually a good idea, that they can get you it's a good idea, right? Then fine, lower, but that's still not a reason not to do what we said. Right? If you can do them both, then do them both. So you don't have to advocate. So because that'll come out a lot of times, you'll, you know, they'll, they'll lower the cor corporate income tax or whatever, you'll argue disadvantages off that, you'll also try to perm the counter plan, and the neighbor will look and say, hey, you know, you bite the disadvantages because you perm, which means you are now linked to the disadvantages of all the bad things that come from lowering the corporate income tax. You know, no, 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 no. We're not advocating lowering the income you know. We are just saying, in theory, you can do both. Therefore, it's not a reason to reject what we're saying. We're just saying, hypothetically, you could do both. We don't think you should do both, necessarily. But you could do both. So we're not advocating, we're just pointing out that you could do both. Uh, link disadvantages to the counter plan that do not link to the plan. Link DAs to the counter plan that do not link directly to the plan itself. So, in the topic that we should, uh, USF, you should increase offshore oil drilling, firms argue we should increase offshore oil drilling. Right. Negatives actually argue we should like drill, increase drilling in Anzwar, Alaska. Right? And there's more oil there and it's better to do oil there, so it's better to do drilling on land in Anzwar as opposed to doing off, off the coast. And, so, and a lot of our firms would say disadvantage. Uh, to your counter plan because you affect the Eskimo and the, and the uh, that, that live up there, uh, and uh, and the drilling would actually disrupt the habitat that lives up there, which would affect the elk and the moose, which would affect uh, uh, the Eskimos who live up there who live off those. So you would be displacing large groups of people, a native uh, uh, Eskimos. Right? And our plan doesn't do it. We're drilling up the Rocky. We're drilling in New Mexico. 
uh, off the coast of New Mexico or Gulf of New Mexico and say, well, we're not affecting the I think you're right. Your plan affects the Eskimo. Your plan is bad because it affects the Eskimo. We don't touch the Eskimo. Maybe we've had it hard enough. I don't know why you want to displace them anymore. Right, so we need disadvantages to the counter plan that don't make your plan. Now you can also argue the counter plan perhaps doesn't solve as well as your plan does. So maybe it solves, it just doesn't solve as well. Right, so the candidate, and so a lot of times you should say, well, the candidate can go in, but they're not as good militarily. They're in depth a little bit. It's going to take longer for them to solve. More people are going to die in the process because there's not a fact and efficient and so forth. Uh, and every day of battle, when the war goes on over there, more people are going to die, civilians as well. The U.S. could uh, get in and get out, block the in Canada again. So we would say, well, so they could do it, but it's going to take them longer and more people to die. And the only reason not to do that is because of China is out there. Well, once we can beat you, China is just bluffing. They're never going to do anything. Then there's no reason for them not to go to the U.S. But we say a lot. So we go quicker and more efficient. Uh, a really weird argument, you can go into deep theory, and you can talk to your coaches about this, is simply to argue counter plans are absolutely not legitimate. That the negative has no ability theoretically to even argue counterpoints. And there are some interesting arguments uh, on this. Like one of them is, is that the affirmative gets to have a plan because they are told they have to represent a resolution. So therefore they have to have a plan that would implement that resolution. The negative's only argument is why that plan or why that resolution shouldn't be implemented. They don't get to argue by some other fictitious resolution which they're arguing should be implemented. Uh, another thing is, is that we have containment on the affirmative side, right? The affirmative is contained by the resolution, so there's predictability. It says USFG, so you know they have to talk about the USFG. You know it says, you know, they should intervene in the Greater Horn of Africa, or it says they should lower the corporate income tax, or whatever. So you know pretty much what the affirmative has to do. They are stuck by the resolution. But the negative would be unbound, right? They can pick any actor in the world. They can pick China. They can pick the USSR. They can pick the UN. They can pick any freaking actor in the world, and somehow the negative's right or they could do anything. They, they are not bound by any resolution. Right? So they have no legitimate reason to be able to argue a counterpoint. And, so and so there's some interesting, more deep arguments you can get into. They have kind of no theory. Uh, but you can still make those arguments. There's still arguments out there why counterpoints are, are uh, illegitimate. Uh, uh, like they would undermine inherent here. Let's say, for example, why could the affirmative, why could the negative do this? Let's say our counter plan, right? You say that all these warlords are killing all these innocent people, and your plan is to send the U.S. in, right? We're well, well, that's going to be bad. Our counter plan, warlords will make peace with the people and stop killing them. That's our counter plan. Is that a better way to go? Our counter plan is just, hey, warlords will be nice now. Well, you can't do that. Why not? It's my counter plan. I got to pick whatever non topical agent. I'm not talking about the US FG, so I'm talking about the world. That's my counter plan. Well, they would never do that. I don't have the proof they would do it. I just, we just have to argue they should do it, right? And they should do that, right? Wouldn't it be better if they did that? Well, yeah, well, that's what I think. You don't have to prove they will. Just like you don't have to prove the government will do your plan. You just have to prove they should do it, right? Well, yeah. Well, same for us. We just have to prove that the world or should do this, not that they will do this. Yeah, cool, right? We're all cool with that. Probably not, right? Uh, so here's a, here's a kind of an interesting one. I just want to give you one example of where it actually has well. So where so I covered everything. I was going to give you a couple examples, uh, but I think you guys got the basics, right? I think we're at 12 lunch demonstrations. So I know there's a lot to cover really quickly, uh, but those are, should be good foundational things. Just give you some notes. Go back and talk to your coaches. I'll say these are going to be in the water. And again, everything I throw out there, not everyone's going to buy. That one is big decision. On what you have to do. But if you do those things, most judges are going to vote for you. That's foundational. Then maybe do bizarre things, like run top of the plants and get away with it. But you won't always get away with top of the plants. You will always get away with non top of the plants. Stuff like that. All right. See you guys on the debate circuit.